Hey boys and girls, welcome back to another video. This is Dragagon. I'll be giving you this video about how to make gold in 12.0. Now, 12.0 has been live for quite a bit now. We've patched already the green sector, which means we're already two weeks in. A lot of people might be still new and they don't know how to make gold or maybe something's changed you're not aware of that or the last video from 11.1 .1 or 10.0 was a bit outdated and you want to know what's there to make gold now well this is going to be the video for you then so first off we're gonna go into two different topics we're gonna go on weekly income and we're gonna go on daily income now weekly income are things you can do only once a week that you can get gold from these are usually the bigger um, aspects where you can gain gold from but it's only limited to once a week whereas there are daily stuff you can do for gold and that's what we're gonna be covering later because the weekly ones are probably the most valuable time wise to do um, make sure you have these done before you go over to the dailies for the gold income so first thing for weekly gold is the battleground emblem this is the most obvious income for everybody that's playing the game so what you need to do is simply do battlegrounds battlegrounds is going to give you this currency called battleground emblems as you can see and with this battleground emblems you can buy these small symbols of gold now you're only limited to 75 symbols of gold a week and this is resetting every week this is why it's a weekly income but the good thing about this is you can do this on every single character you own. So if you have one or two or three or four reincarnations, you can do this on those characters as well. Basically omitting the, the limit of 75 a week. This counts up to about 360k gold per character per week. So you can count that up really fast. Now of course you're probably thinking, what well, man, do I have to really do battlegrounds on every single character? Even the ones that I'm not, not, not really gearing on? No. But you will have to gear some of them. But the new system in Tough I know made that really easy. For people that are not really sure about how to gear the character. Just run Astral for 2 hours on your reincarnation. Straight. And you're gonna have it fully geared. And you're probably gonna have PvE artifacts on top of that as well. And you're fully ready to make super much gold on every single character. It's that easy to play the game now. It's really cool to gear. Doesn't require to invest in those characters anymore. Simply run Astrals. On that character for two hours you get a lot you should get a lot of tier one items if not full set you're probably gonna get artifacts depending on your luck and you're set to go so once you have done that you can also do the following for battleground emblems you go to your dungeons and you go to the order and you do hit training now the training is gonna simply get you into the trial of blood which everybody should know by now if you don't know this is here this is some kind of uh, a test for you to see how good you are in your class and you're gonna send waves of stuff to do now depending well as you're going through this you're gonna get a rating depending on how fast you cleared the wave you're gonna get a rating and that rating is going to be um, deciding how much battleground emblems you will receive at the end of the day so this is going to reward you only once a day uh, but it's gonna give you a tons of battleground emblems that that's quite enough to uh, fill up that uh, limit of your weekly gold. So let's uh, check this with you real quick. If we're gonna do this on every chapter, that means it's 75 allowances to buy a symbol of gold and it costs you 20 battleground emblems each. That means you only need 1500 battleground emblems to reach your weekly limit. That literally means nothing. That is literally just a drop of it. If you do about a full a full wave of trial of blood, you might already get 2000 in a single day. So you already reached that limit by the single day. So for a weekly income, this is really doable on every single character. This is very easy to do. Uh, for people that used to buy the, the battleground gifts, that has been removed. So that's why they put these limits on here. So that you can't go uh, past the limit. So that's really great thing to, to get your gold income. This is a straight up fail safe way of getting your gold. Per character you have, you get way, double that gold. So again, 360k gold per character per week. And then the next thing we have is making gold from Embrium. So Embrium is a currency you can gain from doing mazes. You can find it back in your valuables tab. Going to your private allot and then going to Embrium. So Embrium can be used for many little different things. So how do you gain Embrium in the first place? You get a group of people up to six. You go to skirmishes, mazes and you can go five times a week to maze. 
can also go test to test your own maze, but that's not really what we're gonna be discussing now. Once you have your Embryum from your 5 mazes a week, you can go to your Embryum Converter and you can trade Embryum for all kinds of cool interesting things. Now if you want gold, which is what this video is about, the gold you'll be able to find back at the auction house. As you can see here, one Embryum is nearly 1000 gold. Let's say for the easy part, let's round it off to 1k gold. Now what else can you buy? You can buy the third talent tree, which is a permanent for the pay to play uh, server. So 15,000 Embryum, that would mean 150,000 gold. But because it takes so much time to get to this Embryum and because it takes also uh, effort from people to not spend Embryum on something else, this gets to be way more valuable up to the prices I've seen in Auction House, about nearly 37 million gold for this item. So that's how you can increase the value of your Embryum by simply buying bigger items that you can later on sell uh, player trading which has a bigger value that way because the more Embryum you have the more time it took for you to get that Embryum the more effort it took for you not to spend it on anything else so that Embryum becomes more valuable. So that's what you can do with your Embryum simply do the mazes and then buy them uh, items that you can sell use them for your own stuff or just convert them instantly to gold. Then the next topic we can do is what you can do with your dailies. So in, you have a few daily areas where you can do daily quests, one of which is certainly known as Kingdom of Elements. Now Kingdom of Elements you can do simply do your dailies and if you quickly calculate it you get about 100 per quest. You have this 10 quest so there's 1000 relics a day that you can get if not any more because of your spark talent rubies. Uh, you can see here and from depending on whether you have the uh, elemental altars captured or not because those also influence the loot drop from that and whether or not you have the order buffs in your order but you have whether you have them active that day or not as you can see here but so when you do your dailies you will get your kingdom of relics let's say let's round it off to about 1500 a day right if you're having average luck then it comes out to roughly uh, one symbol of gold a day and one symbol of gold a day is about 20,000 gold a day as you can see here. So that's 20k gold every day by simply doing your KV dailies. If not a bit more because of the bonuses you will get from Spark, from Prestige and from the Altars. So that's a lot more that you can get from here. And what would be a daily gold guide video without Al Rihat, right? So when you have Al Rihat here, you'll see that you have these daily quests that are gonna give you Sovereign. Sovereign is the currency you use here to buy certain things as well. Now how many quests you can get here a day is about 6 of them. So you have 6 uh, quests, 2 from each NPC to go out there and kill whatever you want to kill. Uh, or what is requested to kill basically or collect as well. Once you have those 6 done you can also complete the All Rehat Conquest which requires you to do the 6 dailies to get a bonus reward. And then you also have the boss kill where you have to kill a boss and you also get some bonus rewards from that. Once you have all this over it, you can simply go over to the vendor here and you can buy goods here. Now what I would recommend you to buy and sell, it would be either the Viver, because this is uh, tradable, so that's really good to make money off. And you can also buy the meteor fra Meteorite Fragments. Now it depends what is more in, in demand. I wouldn't buy the Feather because that's obviously bound on pickup, so you can't sell this. You can also buy these scrolls. Now it does say bind on pickup, but that's the folio package. Once you unpack the package, it's going to be unbound in your bag. Now I can't show this because I have no currency. But trust me, when you buy this package and you get actual folios in your bag, you can actually trade them and sell them. So for the video fragments, I think these are more in demand for endgame players. So these are the most valuable, I believe, for the amount of sovereign that you can buy them at. This will be more in demand for new players, leveling players, whether you want to help people to give it for free or to sell it to them. Then again, leveling players really don't have money, so I guess you would go for the meteorite fragments if you want to get some money out of this. Now the folio sparks also help a great deal for the gold. It's not much difference with the sovereign as well, so you could, based on the price from these ones, sell them to your heart's content. Now these small ghostly compasses are also tradable. It says also bound on pickup because it's the pack that you buy, but once you buy them, uh, they unfold in your bag. You can also sell them. Now I don't really see any trading going on about these because they're also timed, they're 30 days and they're more specified purpose 
for heroics, not everybody does that. So I would say focus on the spark scrolls and the major fragments, see where the demand is the, is the highest and then buy those and sell those. You could do the same thing for the gear, but really I don't see gear really being sold. If anything, gear is being given free within the guild to other guildies. And for anything else, the gear that you buy here, it's either quite expensive and people can just do all it themselves and get them as a drop rather than buy them and have it that way. I wouldn't rely on making gold from selling this gear because it's also the weakest gear and people can get the full set in nearly about 2 hours of doing Sector 3, in this case Sector 3, whatever Astro's layer you have open at the moment and get the full gear from there. So I would say just focus on your spark scrolls and the meteor fragments, that would be the best way to make gold from all rehabs. The following daily quest you can do all the time is Karik. Not Karik, I'm saying this is a daily because you can get once a day the bonus of um, getting your sparks every 5 trials, but when you can spam it, but then it's gonna be at 10 trials each, which I wouldn't recommend because that's taking a lot of time, unless you really have a lot of time left over to do this, then I suppose you can do that. So every time you complete the trials, you will gain a demonic spark. Demonic sparks is the currency you can use in Karik. So once you have the currency, you can always summon the Servant of Nihas. It used to be when you only had the chance to summon him if your trial allowed that, but now they changed it to always. As you can see here, with the currency you can buy lots of mount skins, lots of uh, other stuff as well, stuff for your mazes. The stable slot is also interesting. Now everything is bound on pickup, so you, you can't sell anything that you buy from here. Now what can you buy is the symbol of gold. Now for the daily quest you're going to get about 5 sparks per quest I believe. Um, that means it's gonna take you about 2 days of doing this to get your symbol of gold and this symbol of gold yields you as well 20,000 gold uh, per purchase. So it's not a lot at all for let me spend in Tkarik but it's so you know that the bonus is out there. Um, if you do want to grind Tkarik I would suggest you to do it on each week so that you have these quests available. Uh, on your reincarnations so you always pick the bonus with five trials with you rather than having to spam 10 trials every time you do this that way you get an extra five sparks per reincarnation do it on for much less time that you use it for to do this quest so we're gonna check this animals region here um, which is in sector 2 in this case so once we're in the hub of Animus region, you see all these balls around. We're gonna quickly collect 10 of them and then we'll see what the buff is gonna do. So for every time you get a ball, it's gonna be something randomly happening. It's either gonna be spawning a demon, it's gonna be two versions of demons. One is a simple demon, it's gonna chase you, try to kill you. Another demon is a bit harder to kill and it's also gonna chase and kill you. Um, what else can happen? These debuffs can spawn. Now, of course, the debuffs are in a wide range of debuffs, so it can be any debuff, and it can also be buffs that are going to give you more shields, going to give you nation, going to give you something else that's positive. So this is, is a really good way as well to get your uh, Astro Patrol dailies done. If you want to get your debuffs or buffs quest done, uh, then this is the way also to do it. As you can see, for every ball we take, you see here these buffs accumulating, accumulating energy. Once we have 10 of them, we're gonna get our reward, so we'll get back to you when we have 9. So we nearly got our 10 stacks, we're now on 9 stack. As you can see here in chat, we got about 17,000 gold, which is a lot better than other things are going right now. We received decaying particle of numbers matter, which is the uh, currency you need for the old uh, store in the particles. And we get another emulation of the Unexplored Asshole. So this is a quite good uh, daily to do, the anomalous region in sector 2. Now it can be sector 3 in sector 1 as well, depends where it is. Simply look for in the green layer for anomalous region and then th that is the one. Alrighty, then the next way to make more gold is doing monster nans. Monster nans are a really good, nice way to get your emanations of mysterious astral. Um, you can get them each layer, so if you have only green layer you can only do one a day. If you have green and blue, you can do two a day, and if you also have epic unlocked, you can do green, blue, and epic each day, uh, which is gonna give you three emanations per monster demon you kill, monster 10 basically. Um, and then you can gain another bonus one, which is a quest here that's called Fierce Demon Destroyer. What you do, you jump aboard the ship, and you probably jump uh, with your astral lobe to the first monster then. 
So once you've jumped into the right uh, sector, you can check your scanner which color to go, which is for us red, and we go towards the red hub, which is for us right behind us. You then enter the hub where you get into the wormhole for the astro monster then. And the actual demon in question is gonna spawn about 10 seconds after you entered this hub. Then when you do manage to kill him, he'll be dropping items to the corresponding layer of the level. So we're, right now we're in the uh, green layer, that means we're in the 31st generation for us right now. Meaning I think it drops will be for the generation 1 level lower than we really need right now. That means level 31 devices. Transforming crystals also of the current generation of where you killed him, that is 31st here. And then you get the unstable emanation of the mysterious astral. Now we get six because we have lucky moments going on that doubles all the loot from astral um, events. But usually you're gonna get three per uh, per monster. Then, like I explained at the beginning, and that is really what you do it for. You can spend the mysterious astral emanations in this vendor, as you can see here, highlighted what you can spend it on. And there is also the symbol of gold. It's gonna give you about twenty thousand gold per symbol of gold right now. And then there's another quick buck you can do um, to make some quick buck you can also go to map number one which is the explore astral and then sector three so at the bottom there's also an anomalous region this is not the same anomalous region as the map number two which is the mysterious astral and going anomalous region over there it's not the same one so we've seen anomalous region in map number two before We'll be going to Anomalous Region Sector 3 on map number 1. Once entered, you then proceed to having 20 demon kills. So you simply kill 20 demons in this hub. They're not hostile, so don't worry. It's pretty easy to do. What I recommend doing is always going to the middle of the map and then having pike artilleries where you just circle around and firing the pike artilleries. All the demons are one shot killed. Once you have accumulated your 20 kills, you'll be having a energy amulation buff of 20 stacks. You can't go any higher than this because every time you kill a new demon, it's going to just simply reset the timer. So simply wait for about 6 minutes. I'll be going to the hangar so I can invite other people so that they can benefit from this buff as well. Anyone that joins you inside the hangar, no need for them to go on top of the ship, will be able to benefit from this buff as well. So this is really great to make friends or to support your guild. So then once we have waited our 5-6 minutes, the buff is going to be running out and you'll be awarded with a small fee of 5000 gold but what matters here is the emanation which you then once again as you can see on the vendor can be exchanged for the symbol of gold. This can be done on every single ring as well so you can simply go uh, on every ring do it every time and then you get this buff that says overload that where it prevents you from doing it spamming lethal uh, every 6 hours. The next great big thing to make gold is from raiding. So raiding like observatory, there's Naya Citadel, there are the old raids like Dead City, Guluxer Tower, uh, there is Faris. All these raids drop costume boxes and these costume boxes as you can see here for example can bring you a lot of gold too. Avior legacies from the Avior boss and Naya Citadel it goes for 4 million apparently. Uh, 6 million as well. Mirax Legacy is the third boss in Naiha Citadel, that's a dragon costume. Hedus Legacy is the first boss in Naiha Citadel. Um, there's a lot of gold you can make from doing these raids and then selling them on the auction house because player trading is really a big thing. Now, bear in mind because I don't want to mislead anyone. This is the Russian server, there's more people to play with, there's also more economy going on via the auction house. But this has the same deal for the European pay to play and free to play as well. I guess free to play is also falling in this category. Um, but you can make gold by doing simply basically player trading. This is all it really is. This is player trading. So you can do these raids for the costume. You can also, if you're lucky enough, when you do these raids, especially observatory, you can have a chance on getting mount drops. So mounts may drop, such as you can see here the Twilight Feather, the Dark Rain. These are all mounts that drop. Delicate Horn is all, Vivern is almost guaranteed when you do Observatory Easy even. Desert Strix Harness as well. These are all things you can simply sell. For example, this camel seems to be unbound. This is something you can get from the new zone Suslanger. If you have maxed up reputation, if you have maximum currency, 
which is really rare to get right now. This is like super new, so it's obviously super expensive, but if this gets sold, you're making bank, so... It's really easy to make gold when you are doing ra actively raiding. And then again, you can do all this per character. So for each reincarnation you have, which is geared, of course, uh, slightly even just tier one should be enough. You can go into multiple of these raids and then get double amount of these chests and throw them on the auction house or simply call out to sell them if you don't want to pay the fee from the auction house and you can make banks and banks. So that's also a really good way to make gold is simply doing raids and selling the items you get from there. One of my favorites is doing the Battle of Gods raid, doing the last boss on hard mode and then selling those dragon wings that you got from the dragon boss which is the third one and then selling the costume as well from the last boss. You can even take people into there and tell them you're gonna give them the shell skin which I believe is this shell skin actually, this one here and they can pay you a fee for that uh, if you do it for them so it's all it's all there's a lot of gold to be made everywhere but you gotta know the house and, and bits about around it so this video is really focusing on giving you ideas on what you can do to make gold so that is for play trading really especially raiding helps you a lot better then another great way to earn money is goblin ball now goblin ball is something that by people either really like doing they love it or they either really hate it there's never this middle this middle ground where people always were like Meh, i'm fine with it when you ask people to do goblin ball they either always stack because they like it a lot or they never want to tag because they really hate how it lags sometimes somehow or how they're bad at it and they don't want to learn it they always have these two big fire and ice um mentalities over goblin ball now Goblin Ball is still a good way to make money, especially when you win. Now the downside to this is when you lose, you lose your entry and you get nearly nothing in return for that. It's a high risk thing you can do considering the amount of time it may take for you and that you get nothing out of it. Because when you do lose, you could say that you lose about 10 minutes for not even one symbol of Goblin Ball. So when you look here in the replenish replenishables, you will see that there's part of the contest medals. You have 75, that means it's like the right of allowances of the battleground that limits you to get X amount of gold the same way as from Goblin Ball. So you have 75 of them and for every 100 you make one of them, just like with battlegrounds. So that means you can get 75 symbols and here you can see that you can spend them here. The price for a symbol of gold is, seven, is 800 contest medals. So whenever you spend about 100 of these goblin balls, that means every 100 is going to consume one part of the contest medals. So you need 100 currency from winning the goblin balls to spend one medal. And every single medal gives you 200 contest medals. So doing goblin balls is gonna give you a currency. Every 100 of that currency combines with the other part of the contest medals that consumes one for each 100 you have and it gives you 200 contest medals. That means that per week you can get 75 symbols times 200 currency is 15,000 medals you can get per reincarnation per week. Now if you wanna get them all the time into gold, that means you divide that by 800 per character, that means 18 symbols of gold. And one symbol of gold that gets you also nearly 20,000 gold so we do that 18 times times 20 another 360,000 gold so it's about the same as battlegrounds it's literally the same income you can get per week but then doubled via goblin balls rather than battlegrounds so that is how you what you can do as well for goblin balls lots of lots of gold you can do by simply doing goblin balls it's not pvp it's uh simply like playing football it's like mini mini football because you can't move with the ball basically and I think it's quite fun. Yes, when you lose, you lose a, a lot of time and you get rarely anything back for it. But be, bear in mind that you can also do this with a lot of bonuses from the from the other buffs. As you can see here, name of sports, it's literally doubling your gains from doing this. You can also get Goblin Ball Sashes, that's going to double again. The Champion Ball, you can get these also from the Order in PC. So usually in Astral Academy, you can get them from there. And when you have all these multipliers going on with the first win of the day, you're going to have so much that it's nearly almost enough to do only one win a day on every single character. The first one you do. With all these bonuses active, you're going to get like maybe easily 5,000 to 4,000 Goblin Emblems. So that's a lot of them. That's already, I would assume that's all, that's more than half your weekly limit by simply one daily win.
especially on order buff of course which you won't have every day but just to so you know it's very easy to get your weekly limit and get in that other 360,000 gold from the goblin ball just like you can do with the better with the battleground emblems <laughs> oh my god dude. <laughs> this can't be real <laughs> what the hell look at this <laughs> This can't be real. Holy shit.